there are any uh, newly married guys out there, I'll give you a free marriage tip. If you really want to make your new bride happy, just line up all of your tractor attachments right by the front door so she sees it every time she comes home. She's going to love it. <laughs> no, she won't. Glad it warmed up for me. This would have been a lot worse a few days ago. One thing you learn pretty quick if you're a new tractor owner, if you don't get those wheels level when you try to put this loader arm back on, it won't go. It's a fight. Even little humps of ice like this get in the way. Not a lot of room for error. We're gonna get that motor on. So that means what we wanna do is we just wanna give all of these hydraulic connections a good wipe down, clean out any dirt, any sand, that kind of thing. On either side of your loader mount, you're gonna have this little pocket and you're also gonna have the hole there where the pin goes. I try to keep these reasonably clean, I'll clean them out. Sometimes I use the putty knife to help get the, the grit and everything out of there. Then I'm gonna slap a lot of grease inside here. I am not gonna put grease in here because the pins use a, light, a white lithium grease and I spray the pins. So I usually I just clean out the hole, but I don't actually put any grease in it. So we're prepped, we're ready to go with one exception. Right now is a great time to check the torque on the bolts on the loader frame. I believe you're supposed to be checking them every 10 to 20 hours of use, but it is the beginning of the season. You're putting it back on the tractor and it's a lot easier torquing those bolts with no loader arms around you to try to get in the way. And since you've got the torque wrench out, maybe a quick check on those wheel nuts is a helpful thing because you're supposed to do that, I think, every 10 or 20 hours. Your front end loader manual will give you the torque specs on all the bolts. And by the way, there's three or four different bolts, different sizes and different torques and you're gonna find your wheel nut torque values in your tractor manual. Rain's on its way, it's coming close, but we gotta get her done. So I gotta tell you, for a guy that's not very mechanical, this can be a little daunting or a little complex. There's three different torque values depending on which one of these many bolts, including the ones underneath, that you have to do. So what I do myself is I just, I find, you know, all the number twos, then the number threes, then the number fours, because the fours are usually a little bit tougher underneath. But you'll see that there's two sets, so to speak, of frames. So I just find the number twos, and I just do them all. Then I change my socket. I'll do my threes, then my fours. Alrighty, <laughs> let's get dirty. Two underneath, they kind of suck. <laughs> two number fours, uh, number four, I have to correct for that. All right, let's see if we can find them. So if you come under, there's the side of the loader mount. There is the bottom that we were just torquing. These are number twos, and if you follow the orange mount up, these are your number threes, I believe. And then these two guys here at the end of the orange mount, these are your other number fours on either side. And you'll see the nuts are welded in on the back. See that? Sorry, I'll try to show you. That's why I was saying you can't torque the nuts. They're welded in back there. Welded, hopefully you guys can see that okay. Welded to the frame, so although I know you're supposed to torque nuts, not bolts, you only torque the bolts. I hope that was clear for you guys. Sorry if it wasn't. And hey, since we're getting dirty under there anyways, there's a grease cirque for your treadle pedal. 
Don't forget to give them a little squirt once in a while. <laughs> there it is. Let me show it to you. There we go, there's the back of the tractor. Hopefully you guys can see it. There's your treadle pedal, uh, that shaft that goes up, and there's your grease circ right there. So, there we go. Give them a little bit of love here. And I'll give them some grease. There you go. Little dab will do ya. There we go. Good. Alright. There used to be one on my brake pedal for the old tractor, but I don't think there is one here. Yep, that's it. Alrighty. <laughs> that took a little longer than I expected. Time to get to the loader. I was just going to throw that blower off, get the loader on, grab my pallet fork so I could get that piece of equipment out of the truck. But, you know, once you start pulling it apart, you might as well, you know, check your torque on your bolts, do that little bit of greasing, grease up the loader arms and everything because you've already got it off. It's not that cold out today and it hasn't started raining yet. So, plus I wanted to bring you guys along for the ride so I'd have a little company. So, hey, there's six zorks on either side of the loader. You've also got your pins, which you've got to use white lithium grease on. I'm going to do the same thing in these holes. I'll try to clean them out. This guy down here, I'm going to give him a little bit of a clean. I've already put grease on the other side of it. Grease it up, get it ready, and then we'll take a shot at seeing if I can get it on in one try. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Some of you folks are getting a little older like myself, you might find that your memory is not always the best. And in fact, especially when it comes to doing my greasing or lubrication, I often can't remember if I did or not. So what I do now is whenever I grease a zerk, I always wipe it nice and super shiny clean because that way I know if I see that the zerk is dirty, it's either time for another bit of grease or I haven't done it yet. Especially when it comes to the seasonal equipment, if I put it away or I go to put it on the winter or in the summer and I see that the zerks are all nice and shiny, I know I greased them. Did you guys notice this? I just noticed it. One arm is extended further than the other. I don't think I've ever seen that before. And I don't think I damaged it putting it away. Hmm. Let's see how she goes back on. Wish me luck. Sorry about, ran out of film on the one camera, I had to swap you up. Got the hydraulics connected. For some reason I had problems with the red connector, which I believe was one of the curl cylinders, but it might have been this one, I can't remember now. Either way, it was under too much pressure, I had to actually take the connector off, drain some fluid, and then she snapped right on, and the loader arms moved, and I think the cylinder collapsed a little bit, but not much. It's still out, another probably inch and a half longer than the other. So I'm going to hop, I'm going to start the tractor. I'm hoping it's just air or something in there. And I'm going to see if I can just move my joystick into the lift and the drop position a few times to see if these cylinders will line up and maybe purge some air out. We'll, we'll see what happens.
piece of cake. So hey, that's real world GP. I promise, it's not like on a lot of YouTube videos you see where everything is perfect to textbook. One of the things I've learned over the years is you have to put your loader down on flat level surface. If you've got concrete or pavement, that's great. I have nothing here. That's about as level as it gets, but you'll see, I may speed that part up in the film, I'm not sure yet, but it took me a long time of just slowly moving that joystick to try to get the arms to line up and to fall in place. They will eventually, if you take your time and you're patient, even if you're a little bit off even or off level, because what happens is they start to move and the hinges move outside of their joints on the loader arms on the tractor and you can't get them in. But hey, I didn't have to get out and try to move the loader. I just took my time, tried to finesse, back and down, curl up, curl in, and she eventually fell in for me. All right. Well, I hope that was helpful for some of the new folks. I know many of you asked me to show you taking the blower off. You didn't ask me about the loader arms, but I forgot to show you everything. On a positive note, we're all lubricated, greased up. The loader is ready for action. The loader mounts all torqued up, so I'm in pretty good shape. I'm going to grab that bucket, get it off, get my pallet forks, and I'm going to take that 500-pound piece of equipment out of the back of the truck. <laughs> I think you guys are going to like it a lot. I'll show it to you soon. Have a great week with your families. Please be kind to one another, and I'll see you again right here. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching GP Outdoors. Cheers.